What I want to do today is, um, because it's been uh, a week since our last class, so I want to refresh our memories as far as the example that we're working on. Sort of refresh our memories where we are in the grand scheme of things and go over an example and then possibly move into um, another uh, different sort of example. Um, we had talked about, um, in general terms, there are a couple approaches that you can take up when you're developing mobile sites. One is you can make a page that's responsive. Another is you can take the two-site approach. Responsive pages adjust themselves to their environment. So, um, you know, on a low level, that could be, you know, even something so simple as using relative, uh, not relative, but uh, percentage for widths and things such as that and floating. You know, that adjusts itself to the size of the window. So, you know, you could qualify that as a responsive page. Um, so, we said sort of the three cornerstones of responsive are using percentage for sizes. Pardon me? I think it was outside. Oh, okay. <laughs> percentages for sizes, percentages for images and media. I should say widths here, because that's what I really mean. And then the, 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 the piece that we added last time was media queries that will allow us to apply multiple style sheets to um, a given document. And what's more, allow us to conditionally apply style sheets so that we can say under certain conditions, apply this style sheet under other conditions, don't apply this uh, style sheet. This was our HTML CSS solution. Also under this are any number of scripting based solutions, which in could include JavaScript and PHP. Do keep in mind that when we go to the, the, the two-site approach, it's not like we're forgetting about everything we did in responsive. Because even if we do go to two sites, mobile still covers a wide range of stuff. All right? So we might still be interested in making our pages responsive and flexible. All right? So we still might do these things, even in a two-site approach. All right? So again, it's a whole tool chest of techniques that we're going to have that we can pull out and use as needed. Yes? Would underscripting ASP be included or no? Yeah, uh, I, put, I put down uh, PHP, but yeah, any server-side scripting tool could be used. Yeah, I, just, I didn't know if yeah. it was something to stop it. No, it's just no, it was that just... has to run on Windows server. Right? Yeah, um, yeah, we will probably, in this class, we'll probably talk about PHP. Uh, but yeah, it could be any server-side uh, scripting environment. I, I, I wrote PHP, but I meant any, any server-side scripting platform. All right. So, one thing that sort of has to be in the back of your head, a few sort of common, or a few sort of assumptions that you have going for this is number one, we're going to get rid of the attitude of the pixel-perfect design. In other words, a design that looks exactly the same for everyone and, and, and always <coughs> stays like that. So we're getting rid of fixed for responsive. And so therefore, we're leaving a little bit of control out. And therefore, it's not going to look identical on every device. But what we lose in maybe the aesthetic aspect of it, we can still make it look good, to be sure. But when we lose in that, we gain in, in, in an interoperability that it can work in a variety of different platforms. The other thing is, is in the example that I went over uh, last time, I had a couple of style sheets. There certainly would be nothing to keep you from moving, putting tiers of style sheets in. So in other words, I had a mobile style sheet and a desktop style sheet. 
There's no reason why you couldn't build intermediary style sheets between that. So like for a small mobile device, it does one thing. For a bigger mobile device, it does something else. So you could do that via media queries. I only use two, but there's certainly nothing that you can, uh, nothing uh, keeping you from, from, uh, from, from adding on to it. All right, so let's look at the example last time. We did um, the same sort of example. I don't know if it's the exact same code. I think it's slightly different code. But we did the same sort of example using the notion of graceful degradation. That is, we'll start with a full-blown website and we'll trim away stuff that we don't think is necessary for the mobile site. And sort of the opposite of that is um, uh, progressive enhancement, where we start with a very bare bones website that everyone can see, and then we add stuff into it based on certain conditions. So let's take a minute to review these before we go forward. In my mind, the approach that you take is largely dependent on what you're starting from. In other words, if you're starting with a finished desktop site, you might look at graceful degradation and look at chipping away stuff from it. If you're starting out with a, uh, a blank slate, you might use progressive enhancement. You might not, though. You know, it's one of these things that, like, you know, you can end up at the same place regardless of which way you go. All right? So, um, in my mind, you know, how, how, do, how do I want to say this? You know, we'll leave it to the PhDs to sit and argue endlessly about which is a better approach. You know, we want to get the job done, all right? So either way is possible, has the potential of getting the job done just as well. So, you know, we'll look at both of these. Under graceful degradation, what we have is, and this is what this looks like as we resize it, we build in the principles of responsive design. In other words, the columns flow, the columns get bigger or smaller, the image gets smaller. When we view this in our mobile emulator, and at some point we'll actually view pages on mobile devices, but on a mobile emulator, let's pick a small one, page, notice the page has no image, well it has no image, that's really the most substantial difference for this. The way we did this is by putting in a couple of style sheets, the responsive one is the one that has all the floating and, and all that sort of stuff in it. And everyone gets it. So notice there's no media query on this one. So everyone gets it. The mobile style sheet gets applied under these conditions. That it's a handheld device or it's a screen and the maximum device width is 480 pixels. So this will get applied to the mobile one. All right. Um, and what that does, simply put, I believe all it really does is hide the images. Yeah, it hides the image. So nothing really earth shattering, but it does do that. Now, the one thing to keep in mind, we're hiding the image, and they talk about this in a textbook, and, and we won't examine the tool that they suggest, but do keep in mind that even though you're hiding the image, that image still gets downloaded to the browser. That's still an HTML element, all right? Um, which, in certain cases, would be, you know, a bandwidth concern. What do you do then? Well, if you have a lot of images and all that, you might want to go to Plan B. You might want to go to some sort of server-side scripting solution that actually prevents those elements from being downloaded. 
Or you might want to change the design of your page so that you have a link to the page that contains the image. So no one gets it unless they ask for it. A lot of different ways that you could uh, possibly um, develop that. All right. Um, I suppose you could even do something with JavaScript. Like when the page loads, you could have a you could have a dummy tiny image in there when the page loads if it detects that it's on a desktop device, it could go and swap out the bigger image. I hate to do hokey things like that, but you know, web development above everything else is a a practical thing. It's not theoretical, you know. You do want to keep your solutions pretty clean and all that, but you also want them to work and, and get them done in a timely manner. All right. We do have associated with this solution a couple of additional files. The Firefox fix and the HTML5 shiv, which more or less allows, eight, uh, allows earlier versions of Internet Explorer to recognize um, some of the new HTML5 tags. Mainly the main new HTML, for lack of a better word, section tags or structure tags. That is things like section, article, header, nav, footer, aside. I think that's all of them. You could actually look in the style sheet and see all of them, I think. Yeah. Um, so that allows it to do that. Strictly speaking, I probably should put this above this, but this Firefox one at the beginning, but it, it really doesn't matter. There's no impact in this particular case. But again, the idea is, is we develop a full-blown solution and then we tweak our style sheet um, for uh, a different environment. Our other example and I, I can't quite remember how far we got in this one last time. I believe we at least looked at it, but I'm not really sure how in-depth we got into it. But the other one takes, comes sort of from the opposite direction. That is, our style sheet is a base style sheet. That's a style sheet that everyone will get. All right? And then we use a media query to add on to the style, uh, or add on to the style if they're on a desktop device. They kind of call this a mobile for uh, a mobile first uh, approach or a content based design, where your focus really is on getting the main ideas, the main content designed for and then going in and, and uh, uh, worrying about some of the, the more elaborate design elements that you can put in for, for more robust environments later on. One second. I still have the Firefox fix, and I still have the HTML5 shiv. Yes? On this one, would it be possible to give the base and the desktop CSS two different background colors? Because I was... Oh, absolutely. Having an issue where I was getting the big desktop color no matter how much I scratched my screen or expanded it. And that's just kind of throwing me here. Well, did you view it in a, a, a mobile window uh, uh, or uh, the mobile emulator? Or did you simply resize it? Because remember, what this says is minimum device width. Resizing the screen isn't, the min isn't changing the minimum device width, right? Pardon me? Yeah, I was going to say, yes, put it. I had the same, I figured that out a while ago. That you have to put for that. There's a way to do it where it'll work, but this way I've got to put it in the emulator. Yeah, to, to, to show this working, you'd need to do it in the emulator. Because even with this, if we look at this page, um, <clears throat> if we view it in the browser, there it is full blown. The background doesn't change as we get it smaller, right? Because the the selection is for the minimum device width, all right? And the minimum device width doesn't really change. The width of the page changes, but not the device width. Now, uh, if, however, we view this in the emulator, all 
different, so our page looks different. Because this has a minimum device width of, I don't know, it's 320 by 480, so the, the width is 320. So are we looking at a different phrasing for in case someone's changing their window manually like, like, like I was doing? It. In terms of minimum, right now we have minimum device width. Is there another well, phrasing for... Well, let's see if we just change this to, to uh, minimum width. There's also something else that we can look at. Shoot, I didn't want to do that. Yeah, see there? With minimum width, once it gets smaller than that, it flips over to that. So given that scenario, um, do, do you recommend one over the other? or It depends what, what effect you want to create. What, what, how do you want it? You know, do you want uh, do you want the do you want a small window, a narrow window on a desktop to look like a mobile device, or should it look like a narrow window on a desktop? Yeah, you know, that, that, that's your call as a designer how you want to do it. As long as you know how to do it both ways, then you can look at it and evaluate it which way it makes sense. Um, I, I kind of look at it from the perspective that a lot of people. Are websites a lot of times they're they've got everything splashed on the screen sometimes they're scrunching things to look at other files and I I, I guess right now I'm leaning towards that minimum width because even if I'm squishing that screen to deal with other files other projects it still to me looks clean that everything reshifted I suppose I don't know could be disconcerting for someone as they resize it to see <laughs> the background change? I don't know. The, the, the bottom line is, the bottom line is we know how to do it either way, and you should pick the way that, that creates the effect that you want. So, you know, uh, that's, that's a design issue. That's like saying, is it better to have, you know, blue links or green links? I don't know. You know how to make them blue or green. Decide which is appropriate for your particular situation. Sort of the same thing here. Uh, I, I do see a lot of uh, desktop versions that deal with not only a normal screen but the jumbo screens out there so with that who that don't even touch the the mobile platform uh, in terms of seeing that instantaneous shift in uh, arrangements so that's that's one case of uh, desktops having two three versions to you know with these megatron screens okay well again we know how to do it either way okay. so so we can uh, we can code it in a way that makes sense for our circumstances. Notice again, the one difference here is that we need to put in the link to the style sheet in our little HTML5 Internet Explorer snippet of code. Why do we need to do this? And you know, I'll probably say this a hundred times per this, this semester. IE doesn't do media queries. Let me rephrase that. IE prior to version nine doesn't do media queries. So therefore, um, regardless of the platform that you're on, regardless of your monitor, if you're running IE, it's not going to apply the style sheet. It's not going to know and apply that style sheet. Therefore, we pretty much have to manually force the issue. And say, hey, if you're in, if you're in a version of IE less than nine, you're probably on a desktop, and then therefore go in and apply that style sheet. Yes. That's only if you do mobile first. This is with a mobile first solution, okay. right? The other way you don't. The other way you don't because because it's your like desktop that. version has no media query. Only the mobile takeaway has a media query. Here, the desktop add-on has a media query, so we have to make sure it gets added on for Internet Explorer as well. Now there is a slightly different syntax on media query. 
where you can actually put the media query right in the style sheet. Uh, let me bring up an example of that. I was about to ask you because that's what I did. That's yeah. What I've been doing. So how would that affect me um, with like having to put a separate style sheet into the like the HTML5 shift and all that and the shift used? You know? Well, that I mean that would be an argument for not doing it that way. <laughs> you know, the fact that you're going to have to go and take all the stuff that's supposed to apply to a desktop and put it in its own style sheet for IE to, to uh, recognize, that would be an argument to not do that. Because you're going to have to do that anyhow for, for IE, you might as well do it for the other ones as well and then keep it consistent. But, let me look this up. I just, for my own sake, it's like, it just, when I'm working, it seems easier to be working on, like, one, you know, like, mm -hmm. everything's kind of, like, on one page, like, it just, I don't know, it just seems. Uh, let's see. There you go. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This way, you kind of proceed. You put a little media query inside that as opposed to putting it on the link and having it applied that way. So whatever works, you know, I'm not picky. I, I've had students do it either way. Um, it's funny, but thinking in terms of readability, it makes more sense to me to have stuff that is, uh, that, that's in two separate files. So I can look and see everything that's applied in condition A, everything. But again, that's a personal preference. That's not one that I'm going to sit around arguing with you, which is a better approach. You get it to work, and it's responsive. More power to you. So I think that when you do that, when you do the, when you do it that way, mm -hmm. you need to definitely like set the, the mid width and the max width when you do when you do it. Okay. I just I just found that because maybe because of the reason why we were talking about is that it's that that's the only way for it to like recognize the screen size. Like. Okay. I know what I'm thinking in my head. Maybe I'm not explaining it right. I, I, I think I know what you, what you mean. I, I, I'm thinking what you're saying is you'll avoid the problem that we described before, right. yeah. but we avoided that problem too if we changed it to, to min width. Right. So I don't think it's any different in that regard. Right. I think it's just your expectation was when you resize the page, it was going to do something. Right. All right? Yeah. It works. Yeah. Right. Um, let's see. I did have a thought <laughs> once. Um, I don't know. We'll see if it comes back. Let's look at the two style sheets. The base one is very rudimentary where I set you know, the fonts, and I set everything to have a width of 100%, so it's one column. Um, and I do some things visually, like I don't display the image, I put some borders around things, and so on. And then I have the desktop style sheet, which does some of the fancier things. It applies a, uh, a background on the, um, uh, on the body. It changes it from a one column to a multiple column, and, and so on. Again, do notice, though, that even though I, um, how do I want to say this? Even though I'm using, this is, this is purportedly for the desktop version, I'm still following <coughs> good, like, responsive guidelines, <coughs> right? Because I'm making the images, um, a, a percentage of making all the, the, the sections, certain percentages, and so on. And the reason for that is kind of this. If a browser happens to misidentify itself, it won't screw things up too bad. All right? So, in other words, if a mobile browser doesn't, you know, identifies itself in some goofy manner, it'll get sort of a responsive version for this, and because of the way I floated it and all that, it should fit on 
uh, a single column and should look reasonably well on a mobile device. So again, um, this is sort of like hedging my bets, if you will. All right. Uh, plus it has the extra benefit of on a really wide monitor, it makes the picture really big. On a really small monitor, you know, if someone has an old computer, it makes the, the picture small and so on. All right. Um, this even goes back further, you know, and if you think about it, if a web page doesn't support CSS, then you'll get just a very, very plain page, like on a flip phone or something like that, something running an ancient browser. So you kind of have that feature as well. Other than that, these two, I mean, these two techniques are cousins. You know, it just depends. The difference between them is where your starting point is. So you have a base style sheet, and then you have a changes to that base style sheet. In one case, the base style sheet is the desktop version, and the changes style sheet is what you're taking away from that. In the other case, your base style sheet is the bare bones mobile version, and your incremental style sheet is what you're adding to it. So, again, you end up the same way regardless. Questions about any of this? At some point, we will make available mobile devices and web servers so that we can actually test our code on them. Because, again, an emulator is good, but, you know, you want to test it in different environments. Um, I can imagine these days, again, with new mobile devices coming out and all that, testing of that has to be a nightmare. All right? Just because of all the different new devices that came out and the fact that an emulator is good, but an emulator is only an emulator, it's not the real thing, and, and so on. Any questions about any of this? Um, the one thing uh, uh, that uh, I wanted to bring up was that, that, that clear both statement, mm -hmm. uh, because I went for three columns and I uh, had three fluid columns within an overall main container and mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't know if you wanted to touch on that because I found that helpful for, for uh, making sure that I can end those floats in terms of uh, because uh, I know there's an issue with how far <coughs> down the colors went in terms of background colors for each container each okay uh, I, um, I kind of lost track of what your question is um, I think in the past I had some issues where if I had three, like three columns each at 33%, mm -hmm. and one had lots of text and one had like none, mm -hmm. um, the, the clear both statement allowed uh, essentially the background colors to go all the way down, usually to a footer or some overall bottom container. Uh, I know it's probably horribly phrased the way I did it, but uh, I, I did it just uh, today to add those floats. I don't know if you, um, I, I found it helpful. Uh, okay. Well, I, I guess just to reiterate, um, when you are floating, one thing that you can do is you can clear float, uh, and you clear float by putting in an element, typically like a footer or, or something after, and say, as part of the style rule, clear both. And what that does is that sort of stops the floating. So, therefore, instead of like, tacking something on and like floating it to the side of it or having a pier along the side of it, it sort of starts with the flow layout anew underneath that. So that's very useful if you if you have multiple columns and you want to have a footer that extends below uh, both the columns. So like in this example, if we had a footer, um, the clear both might be effective to put on the footer to, to guarantee that the footer is down below the other column. The assumption, again, and, and correct me if the assumption is wrong, because again, I, I don't, with a few exceptions, I don't recall when all of you have had CISS 216, uh, or if it's been, you know, if these, you know, or if you had it from me, if you had it a long time ago, um, and if all these CSS things were covered. So if any of the CSS things that, that um, we're doing or showing, or you need, 
you, you, you're not following something that either I'm doing or something that you want to do that you're not able